Our purpose is twofold. First, we have uh, permission. You have to get permission to do anything over here. We have permission from the Israelis, from the Department of Antiquities, to survey, to do a, a cave survey from Jericho north of here all the way down to En Gedi. And we're right in the area where all the materials have been found. Not only have materials been found right here behind us, but also on down towards En Gedi and other wadis have been found materials. It's a very rich area from a hundred years before the time of Jesus to about a hundred and fifty years after. Jewish religious refugees, let's call them, were coming out into this desert, living, hiding, working. And, and uh, they've left stuff. Uh, they've left scrolls, they've left their remains. So the, the, the biggest thing we're doing is every day our teams go out in the morning, we're divided into teams. They've been given a kilometer down the highway and they, they map every single cave. And uh, as you can see, driving up the road, we're speaking about thousands of caves. Uh, we, we have very detailed maps like this, which take each kilometer block and we've taken each kilometer, like my kilometer is uh, 253 south. I've been working on it for a week now. That means we go up in all the cliffs. You have to go up. Uh, what you do is you first map them from the ground as you can see them, then you start going up. What often happens though is you get up there and you'll see something you couldn't see from the ground. Like the area I happen to be in has five plateaus. And it, I've, we discovered uh, various caves and things that you cannot see until you get to the next level. The other thing that happens is you'll see a narrow slit, maybe a meter high, and you think, well, that's just uh, uh, what we call an animal hole or, you know, maybe a mountain lion hangs out there. But you get up to it and look in, and it's a narrow opening into a whole cave, you see. Now, those are the type you miss but actually that the uh, zealots and the messianic believers and so on would have wanted to find most because that's exactly what the Romans would think like well there's nothing there like the scrolls found in cave one you know I mentioned earlier small opening uh, you couldn't see we will then begin systematic exploration this will go over several years of all all the caves that look promising this is a very lengthy thing See, what has happened is when the scrolls were discovered by the Bedouins, the Europeans got involved, uh, uh, Father DeVoe and the Catholic team especially. But it was mainly treasure hunting, like scurry up these caves, look in them all quickly, let's hope we find something, then we can sell it to the Europeans for so much per centimeter. This is what it finally came down to. They brought it like in shoe boxes full. You know, here I found these. Where did you find those? Oh, in a cave over there. Sometimes we're not even sure where this material came from, you see. Uh, so we think there are still materials here and we want to find them. And we think they relate to um, the wilderness communities that were out here during all of these periods. And I would think uh, perhaps there are materials from the Jesus movement. Now that would be a find. Uh, nothing outside the New Testament has ever been found from the first century. But the striking thing about what we're doing, this is, I'm still talking about the first part of what we're doing, surveying, is it's never been done systematically. See? Are you using something sp special to help you find, find things? No, no, when you go up in the cliffs, uh, we are using radar ground scan equipment. Uh, this is Geophysical Survey Systems Subsurface Interface Radar System number 10. The unit is the acquisition system, which is capable of Connecting to the 500 megahertz antenna that you see in front of me, these pieces of equipment together can identify with changes that occur below the surface. And the hopes are that we may be able to identify with voids or cavities or changes in the earth that may present indications or evidence of uh, where we might have uh, antiquities or some other type of interesting artifacts that have been left here over the centuries. 
Mr. Thomas Fenner, our, one of our geologists, has uh, used the equipment in Egypt in front of the Great Pyramids where he's discovered a channel that has led to the um, location of some antiquities. Uh, it's been used in Greenland to locate a number of jet bombers that were lost after the war there and have been etched into the ice. With the ground skin, you don't have to excavate, which is, creates great problems anyway with the Orthodox Jewish community about digging up a Jewish grave for scientific reasons. It's just not to be done. Now, when you ground scan a tomb, you don't get a lot, but and, and there aren't many artifacts in tombs, but uh, you could at least verify where all the tombs are and so on. Now, we won't have time to do that this uh, trip, but it gives you an idea of the possibilities. Uh, that it's not the answer to everything, but it's certainly a time saver. And also, you don't go tearing up the landscape. Like right where we are now, if they lived right behind us here, and you walk right here and you see this pathway here, uh, what was right here in front of me uh, 20, 30 meters? It hasn't been dug. We can come along the ground scan. We might find that there were structures right here where we're standing. The land is so rich that uh, it's going to take uh, a few centuries to get around to everything. But we have to choose priorities. And for those of us interested in the roots of Western civilization, which takes us to Christianity, which takes us to Jesus, which takes us to this desert, which takes us to this spot where we're sitting, uh, I would rather dig here than uh, anywhere else. So that's why I'm here. If you had only one wish, just one wish, yeah. in something to find, what would it be? A letter from, written by James. <laughs> and in that letter uh, could be many interesting things, but perhaps just some even common things. Just to... Sh to um, because he was the leader of the group from the year 30, to 62, that's 30 years, he had an old and long career, and he bridged the generation, and he was revered by the Jews who didn't accept Jesus as well as the Jews who did. And anything from him uh, would be, in a way, it would probably be the most incredible archaeological find of the century, only because, uh, I mean, there are many Christians who don't even think Jesus had a brother, right? So here we have a letter from him. That would sort of nail it down a bit. But also, what would he say about his own brother? It would be very interesting to get... Uh, and he led the community. I said earlier, Peter didn't lead. Uh, Peter led, but Peter was more the missionary going out, you see. But the home front, you know, the man who... If you read in the book of Acts, he gets up in front of the whole Messianic assembly and says, my decision is that we do this. And everybody, you know, this is Jesus' brother, this man has been given a great position. So, yeah, I, I, that's my fantasy. Find a letter from James and let it say what it says, but I hope it would say some fascinating things. <laughs>